Take a look at this video provided to us by Angela. You see a teacher walking out of the classroom at the bottom left of the screen. During that time, you see Angela's daughter take off her shoes and then toss them on the floor while another child gets them. Fowler returns five minutes later and talks to the other teacher before approaching Angela's child. Angela says that's when Fowler told her daughter she's going to call her mom. That's her tantrum. Like, that's no, no, no. Angela's daughter begs Fowler not to call her mom, even tapping her on the leg repeatedly. That's when Fowler pushes the four-year-old child, who gets up and goes back to the teacher twice. Both times, Fowler pushes her down. And then she jumped, like, get away from I don't know what she's saying. That's unacceptable. After pushing a chair between them, Fowler then grabs the child by one arm and carries her out of the classroom. So uh, after that video surfaced of a daycare workout in Arkansas, shoving a four-year-old girl several times to the ground because she was throwing a tantrum, um, she's now facing uh, some assault charges and has since also been fired. Let's go to some of the details of who this was and why she said it happened. Uh, so Deidreana De Fowler, <clears throat> excuse me, she called uh, her the mother of the of the little girl, Angela Artis, on February 11th to tell her that her daughter had quote gone crazy, and that's according to that. Police report, uh, Fowler told me that my daughter was having a really horrible day. She threw two shoes at two kids, hit them in the head and threw a chair at her. On the day of the alleged incident, Fowler described what she said happened in a school incident report obtained by that station. She kept charging at me and I don't remember pushing her at all or touching her. I was just trying to keep her from hitting is what she also wrote. Artist, uh, the mother had already planned to take her daughter out of the kids spot on February 11th. Uh, and it was supposed to be her last day. She and her daughter are having uh, said her daughter's having trouble trusting, communicating with her new teacher. Um, <clears throat> it almost seems to be a run of the mill type of story now when you see either elderly care or even preschool and child care. Um, people get to these limits and it seems like, what was this kid doing again? This four year old that you signed up to watch and teach in some mm -hmm. form of capacity. So she runs around and she throws her shoes around a little bit. I get it, she hitting kids in the head, maybe keep her from other kids. But at least in this video that they did show us, um, it seemed like a four year old. Now I know you don't have any kids Francesca, but I do, just my kid. And uh, he's been a calm one this whole time. So he's also not a crazed one who'd be throwing shoes at anyone. So I get it, but um, what was the end game here? <laughs> I don't That's get that. not crazy. Are you throwing a shoe, wanting to take your shoes off? Kids don't like to put shoes on in the first place. I've been around kids. You like put try and put a sweater on them, and they freak out. It's just like, ah, you know what I mean? So, if you're working in daycare, you have to have thicker skin than that. And on top of that, you shouldn't be pushing kids to the ground. And there is no world in which a four-year-old charging at you would present any kind of danger to a grown adult. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, so it's just a bit of an annoyance. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and it's ridiculous. And look, I know it's difficult to work as a as a daycare worker. I know these places are often underfunded. Um, that place looked pretty nice, gonna be totally honest. Um, but I also think that, you know, daycare workers need they need money, but more money and they need more training. And also, you know, parents need to feel safe. And this is why I think a lot of women specifically who are often left to be primary caretakers um, have left the workforce in the last couple of years because daycare and finding good daycare is so expensive. Yeah. And kind of one of these stories comes out and people are like, well, maybe that's the daycare of the community, right? And like, what other options do have parents have other than even just taking care of them themselves? So I just think it's it's a it's a tragic state what's going on now. And like, I'm sorry, I'm coming off the back of reading all this stuff about the PPP loans and how many yeah. how many people just gouge those funds. And then you see like daycares and daycare workers and parents who are like, you know, at their wits end. And I'm like, oh, this could have gone down so differently in this pandemic. Yeah, there was a, one of my biggest, my happiest moments as a father was when my kid was able to go to school instead of the preschool and pay thousands of dollars a month yeah. for him to go to preschool. And again, that's on the cheaper end of it, right? right. You pay, I guess this is, this is local, so I get it. LA is more expensive for everything here, so I understand that. But um, the ones that you feel like you can trust more, maybe have this level of, <clears throat> of, of process where they where they vet people I'm sure it's extraordinarily expensive like it's impossible it's unattainable for most people so really it comes down to so what am I going to do with my kid when I would want to work or then if people do work 
they end up spending literally that whole aspect of their working on having someone watch their kid. It's yeah. just kind of, it kind of does it in for itself. Um, and then you end up with incidents like this, we'll see. Um, and, and as you mentioned, the, the background of how even more people are out of the workforce, uh, the fallout from the pandemic, people still probably sick or lost. I said this before, we had a story before. We're forgetting of these, what, 900, over 900,000 people, I think was the number for COVID now in America. Just, um, we gotta think about all the kids who lost parents, um, uh, spouses who lost their spouse, and then they're the single one left. Grandparents who maybe are not taking care of a kid because a kid lost both of their parents. There's a lot of fallout from this yes. uh, and financially, economically for many people. And we just kind of ignore that part. Yeah, what's the money? Where's the money for the for people who lost someone, someone like a primary caregiver? No, it's a really good point. And last thing I'm gonna say is you're totally right. This is why we need universal pre-K, but it needs to work in the way that like the best of our public schooling works, right? Meaning it can't just be a fund that you know anyone can apply for, you get money back for it, you know, and daycares can sort of operate without any kind of oversight. Yeah, there should be some standards, right? And so what happens if we have universal pre-K is that then they'll be either statewide and I mean I know there's some statewide standards, I'm not saying that, but the standards will be lifted. Um, and be on par uh, because it's going to be a publicly funded program. Yeah, well, anything publicly funded is what conservatives say is gonna be the worst. Sure. Because we don't publicly fund anything. Yes, in our normal world, yes, it'd be the worst because you get $5 to it.